I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. I've been telling you about how Judge Eileen Cannon's corruption is matched, if not exceeded, by her incompetence. I'm going to prove it to you yet again. And as we talked about last week, how Judge Eileen Cannon refused to set in a case involving classified information. That's what the case involves. It's the case involving Donald Trump's theft of national defense information, his unlawful retention in Mar-a-Lago, as well as his obstruction of justice, making fraudulent statements along with his co-defendants, Waltine Nauta and Carlos de Oliveira. Judge Cannon refused to set a SEPA Section 5 deadline, Classified Information Procedures Act Section 5 deadline, which is like the main deadline in a case involving classified information. So with her corruption, trying to do that to help Donald Trump, matched by her incompetence in trying to help Donald Trump, she keeps the May 20th, 2024 trial date. She signals that she's not serious. Fulton County District Attorney Fawny Willis swoops on in and asks Judge Scott McAfee for a early August 2024 trial date because of Judge Cannon's incompetence and Cannon keeping that trial date May of 2024. Now, Judge Eileen Cannon was asked by Special Counsel Jack Smith, set a SEPA Section 5 deadline. This is so rudimentary in SEPA cases. And what does Judge Cannon do? Well, then she issues a paperless minute order where she goes, I'm not going to set a SEPA Section 5 deadline until after the scheduling conference that I'm going to hold on March 1 of 2024. And I'm just going to butcher SEPA. Now, here's the thing, folks. SEPA's, look, it's complex in that it deals with classified information and how it is actually implemented from the fact that you have to have a classified information security officer. Things have to be viewed in SCIF, sensitive compartmented information facility. So there's complexity in its execution of the underlying statute, but SEPA's basic. Anyone who's handled a case involving classified information knows how you go through the SEPA Section 3 process, SEPA Section 4, SEPA Section 5, SEPA Section 6, and how you get uh, through a trial in a SEPA case. It's like 101, as I've described before, it's like in a baseball game, right? You have bases. You don't go, wait a minute, should I put second base in that position? Or should we wait till a runner goes to first base and then we literally put on other base? No, we just go to a baseball game. The bases are there in SEPA, first base, second base, third base, section three, section four, section five, section six. This is basic 101 stuff. If you were to take a law school class in a SEPA, if you were to start your job working for the Department of Justice day one and they put you in the division that deals with SEPA cases, okay, they would teach you this on day one. But Judge Cannon, again, corruption matched by her incompetence. Let me show you what Judge Chutkin in Washington, D.C. just did and how easy it is, how basic it is. The command that Judge Chutkin has over Judge Cannon's. So here was Judge Cannon's paperless order that was issued November 16th, 2023. Paperless order denying without prejudice motion for SEPA Section 5 notification. As stated in the court's November 10th, 2023 order, all previously remaining deadlines in the court's July 21, 2023 order are suspended except for calendar call at call and trial. The court reset the first set of pretrial deadlines and indicated on page eight and nine of that order and scheduled uh, has a scheduling conference on March 1, 2024. What are you doing, Cannon? What are you doing, Cannon? Just set the SEPA Section 5 deadline. And just so everybody knows what SEPA Section 5 is, that's where the defense, who's already received, class, received classified information, gives notice to the court of the types of classified documents it intends to introduce in the case because the whole regime of SEPA is to try to avoid something called gray mailing, a form of blackmailing where the criminal defendant basically says, you should dismiss the case against me. Otherwise, I'm going to hold a public trial, which I'm entitled to as part of my due process rights as being accused 
accused of crimes and I'm going to share our national secrets with the public and I'm going to destroy the national interest of the United States of America unless you dismiss the case. So the whole idea of SEPA is we need to handle classified information very delicately. SEPA Section 3, there's a protective order. SEPA Section 4, there may be documents that are so highly sensitive that the government can go directly to the court, what's called in camera, and say, we can't even show these documents to the defendant and the defense counsel. They can't even look at it. SEPA Section 5 are documents that the defense counsel has already got where they're going to say, we want to introduce these at trial so the government can either challenge that, the government can say, well, they need to be redacted, they shouldn't come in at trial, we want to do a substitution and put in its place something else. But that SEPA Section 6 would be the substitution, the challenge, the redaction. SEPA Section 5 is the notification. And what SEPA Section 5 also says is that the defendant has to show uh, with specificity. They can't just say, we want to show all documents that involve nuclear secrets we want to introduce. No, you because they the defense has received the classified information pursuant to the SEPA Section 3 protective order. We've gone through that process. Now SEPA Section 5, the defense has to state with specificity is what the law says. Um, and then the government can try to challenge that. Did you know that your temperature at night can have one of the greatest impacts on your sleep quality? If you wake up too hot or too cold, I highly recommend you check out Miracle Made's bed sheets. Inspired by NASA, Miracle Made uses silver infused fabrics and makes temperature regulating bedding so you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night long. Using silver infused fabrics inspired by NASA, Miracle Made sheets are thermoregulating and designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long. So you get better sleep every night. These sheets are infused with silver that prevent up to 99.7% of bacterial growth, leaving them to stay cleaner and fresh three times longer than other sheets. No more gross odors. Miracle sheets are luxuriously comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands and feel as nice, if not nicer, than sheets used by some five-star hotels. Miracle sheets are the perfect gift for your spouse, friends, or family who doesn't want better sleep and luxurious feeling bed sheets. And since these come with three free towels, you get two gifts in one, just in time for the holidays. Stop sleeping on bacteria. Bacteria can clog your pores, causing breakouts and acne. Sleep clean with Miracle. Go to trymiracle.com slash legal AF to try it today or gift it to someone special this holiday season. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Save over 40%. And if you use our promo legal AF at checkout, you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Miracle is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash legalaf and use the code legalaf to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash legalaf to treat yourself, a friend, or loved one this holiday season. Well, let's just take a look at what Judge Cannon's doing uh, as compared to Judge Cannon's utter folly, screw up, farce, whatever you want to call it. Here's how we know that Judge Chutkin has perfect command over a court. Watch this. In the Washington, D.C. case involving Trump's attempt to overthrow the results of the 2020 election, recall that case does involve some classified information. And one of the things that we believe by you can't obviously see the under seal filings, but we could infer based on some of the filings what's going on here is Donald Trump wants to try to gray mail, blackmail the government by saying, we want to introduce documents regarding foreign government efforts to try to interfere with the 2020 election. And we want to make that public as part of the trial. And there's some other classified documents though that the government had to um, turn over as part of their discovery obligations. Certainly it's not a case involving classified information like the Mar-a-Lago case, but Trump in a prior filing talked about 
Basically, he didn't use the word, I want a gray male. But if you read between the lines, that's what Donald Trump was basically saying by saying he wants to include these documents involving kind of foreign election interference or or whatever. Um, and so what I believe reading between the lines here, it seems that special counsel Jack Smith filed a motion to strike Donald Trump's Section 5 notification. And we can't specifically see the motion to strike because a lot of these filings are under seal. But I could read between the lines. And my best estimate is that when they're filing, when the government's filing a motion to strike, it's probably because Trump's lawyers were sloppy and did not state with specificity as required by Section 5 of SEPA the specific documents that they want to introduce at trial. That's to me why you would bring a motion to strike versus move on to SEPA Section 6 once you see and you know what the documents are. And then you're basically either saying they're not relevant, they shouldn't be introduced, or you want redactions or a substitution. That's why I think Jack Smith's team filed a motion to strike um, under SEPA Section 5. But in any event, we're getting granular on SEPA Section 5. It wasn't even even a question. This is the main point I want to make for Judge Chutkin, whether you go through the SEPA Section 5 process, right? That's like, should I go around first base in a baseball game to get to second base? Judge uh, Eileen Cannon basically says, first base, second base? Is this even baseball? You know, if you're in a baseball game and Judge Chutkin's like, of course, you go to first base, second base, third base, you go around. Here, Trump is saying Trump's unopposed motion for extension of time to file opposition to special counsel's classified SEPA Section 5 motion to strike. On November 10th, 2023, the special counsel's office filed a classified motion to strike Trump's notice pursuant to SEPA Section 5. Trump's opposition is currently due Friday, November 24th. 2023, Trump respectfully requests that the court grant an extension of time of one business day to November 27th to file said opposition. The reason for this request is that counsel is traveling through the Thanksgiving holiday weekend. And although counsel has spent several days in the secure facility in Washington, D.C. recently, we are not able to return to Washington, D.C. until after Friday, November 24, 2023 due date. Separately, as the court is aware, Trump is filing motions to compel on Monday, November 27, 23, and certain portions of our opposition in the motion to strike necessarily reference and rely on our motions to compel. For these reasons, Trump respectfully requests this extra day extension. But you see they're in the weeds on SEPA Section 5. The thing's moving along. Jack Smith's filed a motion to strike their SEPA Section 5. That's why when when I also read between the lines here and see that Donald Trump's also about to file a motion to compel, I think the motion to compel, because it, they're saying it's related to the SEPA notification, I believe it's about Trump's effort to try to gray mail special counsel Jack Smith and the United States government by trying to include this kind of foreign government data that the U.S. uses to try to safeguard our elections from foreign interference. Trump wants to make that a part of the case to try to harm, in my opinion, reading between the lines, our election security, and that's the typical gray male scenario. But in any event, Judge Chutkin's managing the docket the way SEPA is intended. And it wasn't even a question, should I set a SEPA 5? No, we're beyond that. We're in the weeds of now what a litigation in a SEPA case looks like. Meanwhile, in the Southern District of Florida, you got Judge Cannon like, I don't know, uh, SEPA Section 5, where, 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 where? See, we'll deal with that after March. It's like, no, you're you're a, you're doing a SEPA case. What are you doing? Anyway, it's the dynamics of there. I geek out on this stuff. What can I tell you? I Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. Hit subscribe. We're on our way to 2 million subscribers. Thanks to your support. Check us out at patreon.com slash Midas Touch. Have a good one. Hey, Midas Mighty. Love this report? Continue the conversation by following us on Instagram at Midas Touch to keep up with the most important news of the day. What are you waiting for? Follow us now.